because we know the passing of Kobe Bryant left a major impact on a lot of players' lives. He was a mentor, maybe even an inspiration to countless, possibly the largest portion of this generation's greatest players, all have something good to say about Kobe Bryant. Would you say that he influenced your life as well? In more ways than you would imagine. Like um, he was, um, what do you call it? Um, he was a consummate competitor. He was a professional. Mm. And that's a great thing. Uh, yeah. it's, it's not that many people can make you feel that way about anything in this world. Exactly. Um, Coach Brian mm. Ragwe is coach of Cooperative University. So, tell me, Coach, mm -hmm. what made you start want to start playing basketball? First reason is very it's basic. Yeah, it looked like a cool sport. All the guys who were playing it, my cousins were the school dudes playing this Kabisa. nice sport. And that, Kabisa, Kabisa. I felt like I wanted to play it because of. Yeah. Naysers and those are the guys who really pushed me into playing it. I was told I was too small, definitely, why not? So I tried to get in it yeah. for that purpose, exactly. And then it grew into something big. Nice. So tell me, as your as your coach, I'll be sure you've you've seen some things that uh, most of us as normal players haven't. I mean, drawbacks are here and there. Mm -hmm. Things can happen to hasten or you know slow the process of being a coach. So tell me what. What can you say has really held you back in terms of making your team a better a better version of itself? Well, me, mostly for me, mm -hmm. in my experience, what's really held back my team from becoming the success yeah. I want it to be mm -hmm. is a um, high player turnover. Yeah, right. yeah, I mean, I, I get good players, yeah. I train with them for maybe six, seven months. Yeah. And they're done. But most of them are doing diplomas in short courses, All so right. I don't really have time. You know, making a good team takes a lot of bonding, and you know, uh, there's also been a huge, huge setback from the school itself. Exactly. Um, as you can see, the school is cooperative, but we're training in Jaquat. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, support from the school has been wanting, mm. but um, all that given, we're trying. Uh, we're doing a good job so far because we had to change. Uh, we don't have a common like normal kind yeah. of target for yeah. our team we're more of a development team all right so if we can grow a few players and move them from here to a better better situation yes makes our day much better yeah all and right. that's the target that we have right now all right so that's that if good. we if we if we win yeah it's a it's a byproduct mm -hmm. and we do win yes absolutely. so it's a good byproduct but the key intention is to grow basketball players mm -hmm. so that basketball in general this is my way of giving back to basketball which has been a very good thing to me absolutely yeah absolutely it is upon the gifted to act upon their gift for we are granted gifts to nurture them, grow them, and therefore prosper.
Maybe you've spotted her among the crowds of the Mavs home games, and if maybe not, you've definitely heard her work. That is DJ Poison Ivy. She is the first female on the turntables in franchise history and just the second woman to DJ for an NBA team. Poison Ivy is Ivy Owino. Music and sports are her passions. Her job as DJ for the Dallas Mavericks puts the two in perfect harmony. It's a lifestyle, it really is. Um, I don't ever get to turn my brain off. Born and raised in Nairobi, Kenya, she moved to Dallas at nine years old. DJ Poison Ivy is also the first female to DJ an NBA All-Star game. And you know, I think I look at that and, and it tells me two things. Anybody mm -hmm. can do anything if they put their mind to it. Yeah. And secondly, we all take for granted, I think, when we're sitting in the stadiums, just that energy that keeps us going, there's, there's a mind behind oh, that, yeah, the and, and they yeah. know how to work us and keep us involved, and that's a talent. I so NBL, um, the idea is to try and morph it into a sort of an NCAA, where we have quality college basketball, and using the same um, talent that we're seeing here to go to the next level. So this is a platform for the young college kids to showcase themselves for future roles in basketball or beyond basketball, you know, because the Basketball Africa League is starting. So this is a good platform for them to start with hopes that some of them can actually get there to play. In other opportunities, Teams have to pay league fees, but NUBL is, it has bring us to Nyayo, we are not paying anything, it is giving us uniforms, food, it, it, it's good. This specific tournament, the goal is to try and use it to launch a league in September, where now we'll have both men and women, like about four, about four months, a, a total um, league with more teams. But the end goal is to be able to build a college basketball platform, where these young kids can get full scholarships to go to school, these young kids can be exposed to um, out there to teams so that if anyone feels that they have the talent and want to take basketball as a career, they can go to the next level and also just expose them to different things.